Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 24th lecture. So, we have been discussing about the rigid body dynamics and we will continue with that. So, going to the previous lecture, this we have discussed about the retrograde precession. Now, consider the case where i 0 is uh, less than i. So, i 0 is less than i, this implies that gamma will be less than theta. So, this implies gamma will be less than theta. So, this is the case of a cylinder. So, it is a torque free rotation of a cylinder, how the motion will of the cylinder will appear. So, here once we are describing in terms of this, so what it has shown that this red color cone, this red color cone is signifying your disc. And this E 3 along this direction itself you are omega 3 is there, then phi dot is also there. So, omega 3 phi dot all it is shown like this and as it rotates, it is rotating on its own axis phi dot and simultaneously it is also rotating about this h vector at the rate of psi dot. So, instead of this rotation being anti clockwise as, as shown here, it is just clockwise. Okay. So, the rotation sense is just reversed okay, for this particular case as for this disc. So, if we visualize in terms of this cone, so basically this outer cone which is shown by the red, it is rolling over this inner cone which is shown by blue. So, this is called the space cone which is fixed and once it rolls, so you can see that this omega vector it will as the, the, this is the touching point, okay. these two bodies surfaces are meeting along this line as shown here, this is meeting here in this place, okay. this is the meeting line. So, as it will roll over this inner cone, the outer cone, so the point of contact, the line of contact will change. So, this omega vector will right now it is here, after some time it will go here, it will go here, it will go here, it will come along this line, okay. then back again it will come to this place. So, it will keep revolving. So, you can see that it is a just motion appears like a motion of a top. Okay. So, th this is the outer cone okay. and this outer cone it is revolving like this, this center, center of this cone will go in a circle like this. Okay. It is right now here, sometimes afterwards it will come here in this place and so on. So, uh, and the rotation sequence as we have shown here, the rotation uh, direction it is uh, like this. Okay. This is in anti clockwise direction, this is in the clockwise direction. So, this part we then we have reversed and shown here it this way. This is not valid here for this particular one, this will not be in the upper direction, but here in the lower direction okay. and summation of these two vectors we are showing here in this place which is omega. This is psi dot, this is phi dot, these are the vectors. Okay. In the case of the cylinder, okay, if we have a cylinder like this, so obviously we see here in this case i 0 will be less than i i is along these two axis e 1, this is e 2, this is your e 3. So, here you have i, i and i 0 is along this direction. So, in this case gamma will be less than theta. Okay. So, for this we can make another figure, again we make a space cone and in this direction we show h, h vector psi dot vector okay. 
then we take another cone and show it like this. So, this is your omega 3 phi dot is along this direction e 3 cap we have shown along this direction. So, consider this uh, now if we draw the line here. So, this is your theta ok this is e 3 direction and this is your h direction and psi dot also it is lying along this direction. So, the angle between this and this as you can see from this place this is this line. So, this line is shown here this particular line is shown here in this place and this line is shown here like this. So, angle between these two line is a theta. So, the theta angle it appears like this this is your theta ok and what is the gamma angle gamma angle is less than theta value. So, that means your omega here in this case it lies along this direction this is your omega and this is your gamma angle. So, gamma angle here in this case obviously, you can see that gamma is less than theta. So, again following the same way your uh, phi dot is along this direction and here in this case psi dot is along this direction this is shown here and omega as a combination of this the omega is shown. So, the result of this is omega is lying here along this direction okay. and uh, this angle from here to here this is theta while the angle between omega and this this is written as gamma. So, this is your space cone now this is way of visualization. Okay we are visualizing in terms of two cones so uh, how the motion of the cylinder will appear so the motion of the cylinder will appear as such two cones are given one cone is fixed another cone is rolling over this fixed cone so here in this case this red cone is rolling over the pink cone so th this is the uh, this one this is the line of touch or the uh, these two surfaces are touching along this line this particular line Okay, it is a touching along this line. So, as this cone will roll over, so we can uh, make it like this this cone is here and this cone is here and this is the line along which these two cones are touching each other and then this cone which is the called the body cone this is fixed and this is rotating. So, this particular cone it is rolling over this body and therefore, this omega will keep rotating ok. You can see that omega vector is rotating. So, omega vector keeps rotating each vector is fixed ok. Each vector it is a constant vector. So, it cannot rotate constant vector, but omega is not a fixed vector not a fixed vector or constant vector. However, omega magnitude which we are written as omega this is a constant. So, magnitude does not change, but this vector direction it is a changing. So, vector direction how it is a changing you can see that right now it is here after some time this omega will come here in this place ok. Sometimes it will be here it in the opposite direction and so on. So, all the uh, cases I cannot show here on this figure, but if you look uh, if this is your space cone. So, omega lies along this direction sometimes it will be here ok sometimes it will be here ok sometimes it will lie on this surface like this. So, it is a rotating continuously it is a going like this ok it is a rotating all the way from here to here. So, th this is direct precision and here in this case 
just by using the parallelogram rule you can see that and why it is called direct precession because you can see that this and this they are in the same direction because gamma is smaller than theta. So, therefore, it has been accommodated like this if gamma is larger than this. So, omega will go either on this side or either on this side and no longer it will be between these two. Okay. So, uh, and if gamma is larger than theta. So, already we have seen that it will it is bound to be in the opposite direction not in the this direction. So, here the sense is rotation is like this and also the sense of rotation of this is like this anti clockwise both are in the same sense. Okay. Both have exactly the same sense and therefore, you can derive some of the uh, simple relationship. Uh, now, uh, before going into any other thing this direct precession I will state that this direct precession directly comes from this figure. Okay. Otherwise, we will derive one equation and from that equation we will be able to see that through equation itself it will be visible that okay, for this case it will be direct precession and uh, for this case it will be retrograde precession okay. and that can be done by using the Euler's equation and uh, Euler angles. Now, Euler's dynamical equation we have to use and Euler's, uh, so, uh, Euler's angle and Euler's dynamical equation. So, this I have uh, given you uh, the gist of how the uh, angular motion uh, will appear. Okay. So, overall what we see that if we have finally, I am concluding this E 1, E 2 and E 3 okay. and this is the line you rotate it by psi about this. So, th this is psi angle here. So, th this point which we have written as E 1 prime this is called the nodal line. So, if thus you show it by the psi dot rotation about this E 3 means this nodal line rotates at this rate psi dot about this axis okay. and thereafter obviously, then you are giving rotation by theta along this and then finally, so this turned out to be uh, okay, so this E 2 will go from this place to this place if you give rotation. So, theta this will come out of this plane. So, it will appear in the area in this place. So, this is angle theta and then these two are combined together and it is a given rotation phi. So, this is your theta and this is phi. So, if you have difficulty with this figure, so uh, we are going to take it up during tutorial again. So, this is E 2, E 2 prime then E 2 double prime and this is E 2 triple prime this part we have written as E 2 and again and again I am repeating this is E 1 the E 1 double prime is here E 1 triple prime which we have written as E 1 E 2. So, E 3 is here E 3 triple prime is here and uh, once it is rotated. So, E 3 double prime is here and also finally, given one rotation about this E 3 triple prime is here. So, phi dot is here in this place. So, overall here this node is regressing this is called the nodal line if we write this as O. So, O and E 1 prime or E 1 double prime this rotates okay, in anti clockwise direction because each we have taken along this direction and accordingly we have written. So, this figure is of great importance and uh, we will do a little exercise to come to the conclusion whatever we have done earlier this part through little what bit of theory. So, we have uh, now we will have to go back and recall that uh, what is the relationship between uh, the omega and the angular velocity uh, described in terms of omega and the Euler angles. So, we write here the expression for omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3 
Okay. This expression from time to time, uh, if you can memorize it, it will be very good. And uh, uh, but it may happen that instead of rotation R3, R1, R1, R3, we are giving some other rotation. So in that case, whatever we have done in the previous class, uh, in the 22nd or uh, 21st and 22nd lecture, that will not be valid. Okay. So memorization will only work for only one case. Okay, it will be difficult for you to memorize all the cases. So I suggest that you approach the way I have uh, described it, like uh, omega one, omega two, omega three. First, I described in terms of writing in terms of here phi dot zero zero and plus this rotation matrix, and then we used the uh, theta dot. Theta dot, uh, perhaps we have taken. Uh, I don't remember along which direction I have written. But depending on theta dot here, it was x direction, so maybe here theta dot we can show like this. Okay, so if it is along y direction, so I will put here theta dot here in this place. Okay, then theta dot will appear in the middle. So otherwise here this is zero, and then one more term was there. So accordingly we have worked out, and this uh, then the omega one. Uh, this expression we will complete it, and we will use it uh, further for our purpose. So omega one is theta dot c phi plus psi dot s phi s theta and uh, minus theta dot s phi plus psi dot c phi s theta and omega 3 we have written as phi dot plus psi dot cos theta and we know that theta dot equal to 0 because theta is a constant yes, theta a constant. So, if we use this information here in this place. So, your omega 1 gets reduced to psi dot s phi s theta. Okay. Omega 2 gets reduced to only this part psi dot c phi s theta and omega 3 remains as it is phi dot plus psi dot cos theta. So, this implies omega 1 dot differentiate it once. So, this will be psi double dot. Okay. Before this, we do one more step, not to complete complicate this whole equation. Okay. Once we have got this, okay. now go back to this equation omega 1 square plus omega 2 square. So, from this place, we get this as psi dot square will be common and sin theta is there. So, sin square theta will also come as common and you will have s phi square and c phi square where this has the usual notation of this is sin phi, this is cos phi. Okay. So, this is nothing but your psi dot sin square theta and this is a constant as per our earlier working. So, this quantity is a constant on the right hand side theta is a constant as we have worked earlier. So, psi dot must be a constant. So, this implies psi dot this is a constant. And this is why I told you just wait for a while we do something and then we will differentiate this. So, once we differentiate this, so omega 1 dot this will be now no longer I have to differentiate this. So, I will take it as it is, s theta will also remain as it is because theta is a constant. So, psi dot s theta here this is s phi. So, this becomes c phi and then phi dot will appear. So, phi dot will write here in this place. Once we differentiate this, so if, uh, Okay, so, s phi sin phi differentiated this becomes cos phi and then phi dot appears. Similarly, this omega 2 dot we get from this place psi dot s theta remains as it is okay, and c phi this becomes s phi and with minus sign this becomes phi dot on omega 3 dot obviously, this is 0 okay, omega 3 dot 0 because this quantity is a constant. Now, from uh, the, this relationship, uh, it's a we can work out. Uh, I will have to go on the next page, put it in the Euler's equation, and then work it out. So, uh, 
let us go on the next page so in the Euler's equation i1 is i so i times omega 1 dot minus i2 which is i minus i0 times omega 2 omega 3 this equal to 0. So, this is the first equation in which we insert this. So, this i times omega 1 dot omega 1 dot just now we have worked out this is phi dot psi dot s theta c phi phi dot psi dot phi dot psi dot s theta and c phi phi dot psi dot s theta and c phi okay. minus i minus i 0 omega 2 omega 3 which we need to pick up from here omega 2 and this is omega 3 psi dot c phi s theta psi dot c phi s theta times phi dot plus psi dot cos theta this is omega 2 this is omega 3 and this equal to 0 okay. expand it phi dot psi dot s theta c phi minus i minus i 0 if we multiply this so this becomes phi dot the first term this is psi dot c phi s theta and plus psi dot a square c phi s theta and this cos theta will write as c theta this equal to 0. and breaking it minus psi times phi dot psi dot c phi s theta okay. and similarly uh, so we will have total two terms here so if we break it we will have two terms okay. but what we can see that these two terms will cancel each other so the case gets simplified so, here uh, the other term we can write as this plus i 0 times phi dot psi dot c phi s theta and minus i minus i 0 times s theta c theta this equal to 0. So, these two terms they drop out and from here what we see that c phi and s theta both are common. So, if c phi not equal to 0 and s theta not equal to 0. This is the case c phi not equal to 0 c because we are going to divide both sides by c phi and s theta to eliminate c phi and s theta. So, if these quantities are non 0, so then what we get i 0 times phi dot psi dot minus i minus i 0 times psi dot square c theta this equal to 0 psi dot will also psi dot is not 0. So, therefore, this gets reduced to uh, we describe in terms of psi uh, we will describe it in terms of psi dot. So, we will write it like this. first let us eliminate this part and i minus i 0 times psi dot c theta and this implies psi dot equal to i 0 divided by i minus i 0 times phi dot. Okay, so, look at this equation what does this say? If i 0 is greater than i, so the quantity which is present here this will be negative i 0 this implies that i 0 divided by i minus i 0 will be less than 0 means psi dot and phi dot they will be of opposite sign. Okay. So, this implies uh, this implies psi dot and 
phi dot will be of opposite sign okay this is this is what has been the uh, what the this is the case what we have been discussing that uh, once i0 is greater than i means it's a case of a disk okay disk and this gives rise to the retro grade precession here handwriting cannot be very good because it's a being written on the screen of a uh, desktop so uh, so exactly you can visualize from this equation earlier we have done this through the geometry that psi dot and phi dot is of opposite sign so psi dot we assumed it to be in the positive direction so and means it's a anti clockwise and from here what it says that phi dot is bound to be if psi dot is positive so phi dot is bound to be negative and here one more thing is missing this psi dot equal to i0 divided by i minus i0 and this is c theta also so uh, psi dot we, we are here we have to write here c theta or phi dot you can describe in terms of uh, psi dot whichever way you want okay so if this is psi dot so the sense of phi dot is not going to be the same it must be clockwise means the psi dot so this phi dot must be here along this direction okay that means it's a something like this and this is opposite way I will show by a better figure. So this is the direction here. The solid line. This is anti-clockwise. Okay. This is above this. While for this case, this is this is rotating this way, but this is rotating this way. So it is from the downside. then see uh, these two are in different direction they have not the same sense okay so this is for your your, your retrograde on the other hand if you have the case where i is greater than i0 okay so this quantity in the bracket the quantity here in this bracket is going to be positive and therefore both will have same sense psi dot and phi dot so uh, in this implies that i0 divided by i minus i0 this will be greater than 0 and this implies psi dot and phi dot will have the same sense which we have written as the direct or progress rotation or precession this is the direct precession and also uh, is called the pro grade this is retrograde so this is pro grade okay so th this completes uh, this description uh, for uh, calculating uh, calculating uh, the rate of precession uh, basically what this gives you this gives you relation between the rate of precession and rate of spin there are something that you can observe from this equation i will copy it on the next page this is psi dot this equal to 
i 0 divided by i minus i 0 and phi dot divided by c theta. So, what you can observe that if c theta tends to 0 means theta tends to pi by 2. So, this is the case where the your cylinder or the disc it has become something like this. This is your side dot direction while the spin is along this direction. Okay. So, it is approaching pi by 2. So, in that case this blows up. Okay. Remember the case once we have derived here we have written this should not be 0. So, we are not taking the case to be 0, but it is approaching that value okay, limiting case. So, in limiting case as we do in the case of calculus. So, um, if we consider that case, so here this blows up. Okay. So, you can see that for phi dot if it is finite psi dot will become very large. It, it tends to infinity, tends to infinity. So, for a finite spin, if you increase the angle of nutation here, this is your theta angle, if you increase it up to 90 degree, it is uh, bringing it to this place. So, in that case, the precision rate will be extremely high. Okay, and quite often uh, as uh, sometimes in the beginning itself I, I might have mentioned that this kind of case which is the torque free case can be simulated for the satellite or either say you have a coin like this, this is a coin and if it is possible to rotate it about this axis, okay, you rotate about this axis and then toss it making certain angle with the vertical theta. And simultaneously, it is a rotating about this axis by psi dot, this is by phi dot. Again, here I am showing like this, but it will be in the opposite direction. So, this case simulates this means the a coin rotating uh, spinning about this axis, this ax this particular axis, and also processing about this axis and tossed up in the air. Okay. So, once it uh, starts falling. So, it is a free from gravity and because of the symmetry there is no torque acting on the coin and therefore, this case is perfectly simulated. Assuming that there is no aerodynamic drag and other things or it may be small for a short period we can assume it to be negligible. Okay, so, this comes to a conclusion uh, and uh, we have to look into the stability of the system and uh, what I will do that uh, we can look at the same thing from uh, another perspective and it will be very useful. However, it is going to take uh, more time. So, we have few more lectures remaining on this. So, I will try to accommodate that part also uh, because if you get the another view of how to work out the same equation it will be good. But we have to also look into the stability of the rotation. So, the next topic for this will be the stability of torque free rotation. Which will take up uh, maybe uh, in the next to next lecture. There are few more things that we can conclude from here before winding up uh, this particular lecture I will go through this. This psi dot if we look into the magnitude of this, this will be i by i minus i 0 magnitude times phi dot by c theta magnitude. Now, this quantity what we will do that uh, I will bring this whole thing on this side. So, maybe c theta written here and uh, i minus i 0 divided by i it is written here in this place and psi dot magnitude 
equal to phi dot magnitude. Now, look at this equation, this quantity is always less than 1, this quantity is less than 1, okay. because it is a c theta. So, either it is a positive or negative, this is bound to be less than 1. Okay. This quantity, whether it is a greater than 1, and say here this is i 0, this is i 0 here, here in this place, here also this is i 0, on the previous page let us check. I 0 we have written here. Okay. So, I 0 is here and I minus I 0 thereafter. Okay. What about this quantity? Now, if I is greater than I 0, so this we can write like this. If I is greater than I 0, Okay, this will be greater than 1, okay, then this gets greater than 1 and from there you can subtract this 1. Now, how much it will be greater it depends on this magnitude of this i, say the i by i 0 is 2, so this is 2 minus 1 equal to 1. Okay, if it is 3 this quantity, so 3 minus 1 this will be equal to 2. Okay. So, this quantity this is always less than 1, this quantity is depending on the magnitude of this quantity either this will be greater than 1, it can also be other way if we look that if i is less than i 0. Okay. So, this quantity becomes uh, less than 1 okay, and therefore, this quantity will be small. Okay. So, this quantity then if i is less than 0, uh, if i is less than i 0, so i by i 0 this becomes less than uh, 1 and therefore, i by i 0 minus 1 this quantity will be less than 0, this will become a negative quantity because this is less than 1 and from there if we subtract it 1, so this is going to be a negative quantity. Now, again how much this difference is, so how much this difference can go, i can become small as compared to i 0, but uh, how much it is going to be? The maximum it can be let us say this is 0 0.2 and here this turns out to be 5 i 0. The previous case we have taken to be, uh, okay. we are discussing i less than i 0, oh, okay, fine. So, uh, here in this case, uh, this we can write as 0 0.04 and from here if we subtract this min this one so this will be 0 0.96 so this quantity becomes 0 0.96 c theta is less than 1 okay and psi dot is here so this is less than 1 this is less than 1 magnitude by and these two are related by this relationship. So, what does it imply? Okay. Here uh, this quantity which you are multiplying, so in this particular case this becomes less than 1 magnitude wise. Okay. So, that implies so psi dot will be magnitude wise greater than phi dot. Okay. This is what exactly it is applying. So, th th this is the way of uh, looking into the, uh, if you are given any problem, so you can analyze uh, starting from here. Uh, if I keep doing this, we, uh, it will be true strenuous and uh, it will cover a lot of time. So, I am avoiding this. So, I will wind up this lecture with this uh, advice that always whenever you come across in the rigid body dynamics such equations or you are tackling finally, you have come to conclusion with some equation. So, always analyze this the limiting cases what happens once here as per here in this case theta dot uh, theta tends to 0 or uh, what happens with uh, i and i 0 they become equal say i and i 0 once they are equal then what happens in that case i and i 0 becoming equal means it is a case of a sphere. Okay. All the three are becoming equal i 0 this is a case of a sphere. So, uh, this becomes 0. So, what does this mean? So, uh, this kind of situation will pick up uh, take up in tutorial. 
for the time being we stop here and go to the uh, we will continue here in the next lecture thank you very much